Welcome to the lecture on the quadratic equation and the determinant. In this lecture, we're going to be focusing on solutions of quadratic equations. Recall, quadratic equation must contain an x squared term and no higher and may contain other stuff such as x terms and number terms. A solution for a quadratic equation occurs when the entire equation equals zero. For example, say we're given this quadratic. A solution happens when we write this statement. There are specific values for x that will make this case true. And we need to find the values of x that will make this true. In order to make our life easier, we're going to be using what's known as the quadratic equation. But before we can use the quadratic equation, a couple of pointers of how our equations have to be set up. Before we can use the quadratic equation, there's a couple of things about our setup that have to be noted. First, we have to be in standard form. Recall. It's the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Two, the equation must be set equal to zero. Consider the two following cases. In the first case, we have x squared equals 3x plus 1. And in the second case, we have x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals negative 4. Now, it's not quite in standard form yet, and both equations are not set equal to zero but we can make this work. Notice we can rearrange both equations to get what we need. So in the first one, we could rearrange it by moving the x squared term to the other side. And we would get 0 equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 1. This is in standard and it's set equal to zero. It works. Conversely, for those of you who see things slightly differently, we could move the 3x plus 1 to the other side. To do that, we subtract 3x minus 1 from each side. And now we would have These two forms are equivalent and you will get the same answer with them. So it's just a note to be careful with your manipulations. Let's look at the second example. Notice our big thing here is we look like we're in standard form, but we're not set equal to zero. So what do we do? We rearrange so that we do get zero and I can rearrange by adding four to both sides. If I rewrite, I'll have x squared minus 2x plus 7 equals 0. And now I can use the quadratic equation. So what is the quadratic equation you're asking? Let me show you. It's this equation. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is what allows us to find x values that will give us an equation equal to zero. Let's work with an actual problem. Remember, we have to be in standard form and our equation has to be set equal to zero. Let's consider the following equation. y equals x squared minus 2x minus 1. First, we need to identify a, b, and c. a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals negative 1. Now we can plug these values into here. And I will get x equals the opposite of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all divided by 2 times 1. I can simplify this out to be 
2 plus or minus square root of 4 minus a negative 4. All divided by 2. I can further simplify to 2 plus or minus the square root of 8 all divided by 2. I also need to keep simplifying further. It looks good but we're not quite done. We can keep simplifying because this radical can be further simplified. Consider the square root of 8 can be written as the square root of 4 times 2 which can be rewritten and broken up into the following. We can have two radicals multiplying each other. Well, we know what the square root of 4 is. That's just 2. And the square root of 2, we can't reduce that any further. So square root of 8 actually equals 2 times the square root of 2. So now let's stick that back in here. And we will have x equal to 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2 all over 2. And we can keep simplifying. Notice we have a factor of 2 in each part of our answer. So this can actually be rewritten as 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. Let me show out these two solutions separately. We have 1 plus square root of 2 and 1 minus the square root of 2. This tells us we have two real solutions. And our graph could look something like that. Notice it crosses the x-axis twice. And this is where y would equal 0. So this makes sense. Let's move on to a second case. Let's consider the equation y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. It's in standard form. Now let's set it equal to 0. Then we identify a, b, and c. a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals 1. Let's move into our quadratic equation. And we'll get the opposite of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all divided by 2 times 1. We simplify this down to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 all over 2 which further goes down to 2 plus or minus the square root of 0 all over 2. Square root of 0 is 0, so this goes down to 2 over 2, which actually equals 1. Notice, we only have one real solution. In a graph, it might be something like this. Our vertex point lies on the axis. Conversely, it could also look like this but there's only one time where the parabola will ever touch the x-axis and that's at its vertex. Let's move on to one last case to consider. Let's use y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. We're in standard form so let's just change this over to a 0 equals stuff and get. Now we can substitute into our quadratic equation after we identify a, b, and c. a equals 1 b equals negative 2, and c equals 3. If we substitute into the quadratic equation, and we'll get the following. x equals the opposite of negative 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, all divided by 2 times 1, which simplifies to 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 12 all divided by 2. And now we get 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 divided by 2. Up to this point we haven't been able to deal with negative signs under a radical. It's been a no-no, but we can change that. 
work with me here and consider the following. We can rewrite the square root of negative 8 in the following way. We can say that it's the square root of 8 times 1. Furthermore, we can break it up because we have two radicals multiplied. We can break it up into the different radicals. Now, let me make a definition. I'm going to say I, our imaginary number, for those who want to see it, let me show you. We keep our I. We have the square root of 4 times 2, which can be written as I times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get I 2 square root. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get I times 2 times the square root of 2. Let's put this into here. And we get, notice again, we have a common factor of 2. And we can rewrite this as 1 plus or minus i square root 2. So to show the two solutions, we've got 1 plus i square root 2, and we've got 1 minus i square root 2. So this gives us two imaginary solutions. Its graph will look something like this. It never crosses the x-axis. Or maybe it looks like that. Again, it's not crossing the x-axis. To use the quadratic equation, our original equation must be set equal to zero and must be in standard form. Then we must identify a, b, and c and substitute these coefficients into our quadratic equation. Once we've substituted our numbers in, we can solve and simplify. Our final answer must be in the simplest terms possible. So please pay attention to your algebra and to what's under your radical signs. We found out that we can have three cases. We can have two real solutions. We can have two real solutions where our parabola will cross the x-axis where our parabola will cross the x-axis twice. We can have one real solution where only the vertex crosses the x-axis. And finally, we can have two imaginary solutions. In this case, the parabola would never cross the x-axis. Without having to go through all of this, we can actually tell how many solutions and what type we're going to have by looking at the determinant. What's the determinant? It's this part of the quadratic equation. Everything that's under the radical sign, b squared minus 4ac. So actually, we really only need to focus on this. And here's the three cases to consider. If b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, we'll have two real solutions. If instead b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, we only have one real solution. And lastly, if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, we will have two imaginary solutions. And that's how we can use the determinant. Why is this useful? Because sometimes we're asked just for how many solutions or what type of solutions. And this cuts down on the amount of work that we have to do. Because sometimes solving the quadratic equation can be a real tough problem.